What up? So today I'm gonna show you how to hydro dip and embroider on a pair of Converse. 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 Con. 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 This just in, breaking news. Plain shoes are everywhere. In your house, at the park, in your closet, everywhere. Your friends wear them, your mom wears them. Look down, they could be on your feet right now. These plain shoes have been known to cause something called plain shoe paranoia. The disease where you start seeing non-existent shoes popping up everywhere. Time to start panicking. Ridiculous, but 99.99% of all people on the planet Earth suffer from plain shoe paranoia. That's a fact. Straight up. You want to look like this guy? You want to lose it? Well, just recently, we have found a cure. Schmo XD. It's the good stuff. You're gonna want it. You're gonna take it. A lot of it. SchmoXD was built to enhance your life, but more importantly, your tennis shoes. You are going to love it. <laughs> Over the counter and prescribed. You can either get a prescription or just on the internet anywhere. <laughs> As a certified pre-owned vehicle driver and a certified doctor, I can tell you right now, SchmoXD is right for you. People used to like me for me, but since I started using SchmoXD, they like me for my shoes. Cool shoes, bro. Hey, thanks to Schmo XD. <laughs> I was doing the, the delayed way. All right. So in the last video, I showed you guys how to like hydro dip these shoes. I ran into some issues. Like it's kind of cracking. And that's what I'm gonna try to figure out. This video is one. Try to make the image stick and not like flake or peel off. I also want to see if it'll work on fabric. And last, I want to also embroider. So it'll be like a little combo. So I'm gonna be doing it on these Converse's, Converse, Converse, I. I'm so, because there's a lot of canvas for me to be able to embroider on. But first, pause. So my buddy and my roommate Weston, he's doing a video on Converse as well. And I asked him to do a burn test as part of his video on the Converse so we could see what the fabric's made of. Cause that's gonna affect how well it hydro dips. But holds on bases. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, play. To figure out like all the stuff I need to figure out, I'm gonna test out on some fake converse that I'm gonna make right now. <laughs> so these fashion shoes. So let's start testing these out. I have this clear matte stuff that I usually use, but then I bought some primer that's actually matte for hydro dipping. So we're gonna do the first half with that clear coat, and then the other half with that white primer. And we're gonna test to see which one will uh, hold better. So I have my little table camera and the fish tank to do the hydro dipping. Just fill that up with water and away we go. I'm just gonna use some leftover film that I have from last project. And I'm dipping that clear coat side first. And after you dip the shoe in water, the film has like this gooey top layer. And I'm kind of wondering like if I rub that off, if that's going to help make it not as brittle and stick better to the shoe. So I rubbed it off on half of the shoe and then went ahead and dipped the second side of the shoe with that white primer. Again, I rubbed off half of that to see if like getting the goo off makes a big difference. 
and once the shoe dried, I test that clear coat side first. And it's getting like a little bit of like stress cracks, but I was fairly stoked with how well it was holding on the fabric. The side with the, the white hydro dip primer, I wasn't so stoked about. It was just like peeling off. It seemed like it wasn't really sticking to the rubber very well. And it was worse on the side that didn't rub the glue off. And I found that it was the same on the clear coat side. So rubbing the goo off uh, helps. On the second shoes, I want to use both sprays. So I coated it with the clear coat first. And then once it dried, I went over with the white primer. And then on the other side, I just left blank with no primer. So we're going to test that out. So I put down the film and did the side without any primer first. And I did it kind of off so I could see if the film like seeps into the fabric and makes it like dingy looking. On the second one, just did it like normal. It looked pretty cool on the bottom of the shoe. And on both those sides, I rubbed off half of the goo. And while that shoe dries, I thought I could test out embroidering. So I took out the shoelaces and just did a simple stitch. It was kind of hard because it had that like coat of paint on there, but looks like it's gonna work. So the no primer side, I mean the side with the goo kind of was bad. But the side where I rubbed it off, there's no cracks, and it was sticking pretty cool. It did look like the yellow was kind of seeping into the canvas, and even more so on this shoe. You can see there on the back. So I'm a little worried about that. But the side that I did both the clear and white coat, it was just peeling right off. So that didn't work. Okay, so we have these done. Now I kind of know more what I want to do on the actual one. And yes, I'm in different clothes. That's because it takes me days to film and make a project. It uh, also takes me days to edit. So you should consider subscribing because I'm gonna keep on putting all this time and effort into the videos for you guys. So cool. Just gotta figure out what images I wanna put on this shoe. And normally I do this on the computer, but I actually got a really bad concussion a while ago. And so I've been trying to stay off screens as much as possible. So we're gonna be doing it on paper. It was really bad. I like lost that entire day. I did not know what was uh, going on. So cool. Let's figure this out. So I was thinking maybe do like a leaf pattern over the Converse star and then like a ring of flowers. Maybe do that leaf pattern along the sole. Maybe embroider vines on the shoelaces. For the color scheme, we got red, blue, green, and yellow. And another option, I thought we could put that leaf pattern over the front and the back and then put a yellow line in between the red and the blue one then just add a bunch of red, blue, and yellow flowers. So for the other side of the shoe, I thought we'd put that yellow line as a squiggly, and then maybe do like daisies growing up from the bottom, or just do a bunch of red, yellow, and blue flowers all spaced out. I also thought it might be cool to do like chain or like barbed wire embroidered on the shoelaces. And next I wanna figure out what to do on that tongue. I thought maybe like my logo with like a flowery background. Also a cool idea was like a chain link and the links are flowers. Which made me think, what if I did the logo as the flowers? And I think that's what we're going to go with. For the back spine thing, I'm just going to do a little vine. And good. So I mocked up with some crayons. And I really just wanted to color the crayons, I think. But it was fun. I feel like I should color more often. I remember when I was like, oh, I need to stay off screens. Blah, blah, blah. Well, I need to mock them up on the computer anyways, so I could print them out on the film. So we got the one side with a bunch of flowers the ring of flowers, and then the logo that I'm gonna put on the tongue, then the space out flowers, and the daisies. So cool. So I sent the file over to the guys who print these out for me, and instead of printing out the stuff for the second shoe, I sent them the Photoshop mock-up. And the store's closed. So we're gonna have to wait till tomorrow to do the second shoe. But I went ahead and got started taping off that first shoe, getting the stuff that I don't wanna be hydro dipped, so first we're gonna do that fabric side. So I taped off all of the rubber parts. And I didn't want the design getting on the eyelets, so I just used the orange stuff that I used in the last video. All right, so pause your video right now. Whatever face you get of mine, you have to put as your uh, profile pic. Sorry, ooh, sorry. I don't make the rules, but gotta do it. So I love how it looks like when the film reacts to the water. And not gonna lie, I was pretty nervous to dip this, but I just went ahead and dipped it. And it turned out pretty cool. I was pretty excited for it. I thought I would just rip off the tape while I was still wet. And then once you got that done, I went and washed off the goo as, as good as I could. Now time for the other side. 
I was also letting the shoe dry in between dipping them. Ooh, wait, one more time. That was real time. That sped up. Really cool. Anyways, I was letting it dry and then I'd come and do the other side. And I thought it turned out pretty good. And now I was going to do the tongue. And something I learned on this project, it's super hard to get things lined up, like little things. So for hydro dipping, I think it works best for all over prints. Like right here. Let's try as I could. Try and get it lined up. And even then, I was off, so. Still looked good, but I think if you wanted to like line up little images, and if you're doing canvas, you could use like iron-on. But for all over prints like this leaf one, where it doesn't really matter where you line it up, it worked out really well. I tried to roll this one, and it kind of worked. Doing round objects kind of suck, because it either doesn't really get all the way around, or it warps the image. So another thing I learned. You want the image to stay on the surface of the water. It will stick best to the shoe if the shoe's dry. But because the tape was so close to the image, as I was pushing the shoe down, it would hit the tape, which would make the film sink. So then there was a layer of water in between the shoe and the film, so it didn't stick. So I had to do that again. Ooh, hands are getting pruney. And this time all I did was I came at a different angle. I think the film still sunk, but there was enough contact between the film and the shoe so that it stuck. I had a similar issue with this dip, but really I just missed the mark, so. Lining up the prints is hard. And that one was crooked. But I kind of like that look. I think this one was my favorite design. And it turned out really nice. Tried again for the, the yellow squiggle and a little better. You can see really good on this one where the shoe hit the tape. And so the film didn't stick to it. But I think I'll just fix that part when I embroider. I was finally getting the, the technique down. And I feel like these ones I lined up pretty good. Although it was still off. Doing the last squiggle. And there's like a chunk missing. And so I tried to just put a dry piece that I cut out. And that didn't work. This time for the, the front bumper on the shoe part. I dipped one half and lifted it up. And then dipped the other half. And that kind of worked but not very good. I think the back converse piece right there is probably my favorite. The circle one on the side I think would have worked better, except I was too impatient to let the fabric dry, and so the tape wasn't really sticking to it. I was getting better at lining up those small little pieces near the end, and I saved my favorite thing to customize on shoes for last. The aglets. I like it. I like, I like it a lot. But for us, I think small details are what make the difference when you're working on a project. <laughs> that squeaking noise came from my mouth when I was moving the tank. Anyways, to fix the spots where I either like missed or didn't stick, I just took a marker, a green marker and a black marker, and I tried to match the print as good as possible. And I thought it did okay. I think I got better as I went. Like this one looks better than the last one. But it also wasn't as big. This part right here was where it like warped. And so, I don't know. The dark parts, like, I feel like I got away with. The like lighter parts kind of stood out a little bit. But I don't think you'd tell if, if you didn't know. Also, look how much the image on the fabric is fading. I'm going to talk about that and why I think that happened in a little bit. This last one right here. Started using like a Q-tip to like blend and stuff. And once I got all touched up, I was ready to embroider. So I have a bunch of different colors, and I sat on those three, I feel like they match the best, and started at it. And honestly, I forgot how much I love embroidering. But, you know when you're working on a project, and you keep on adding things, and adding things, and adding things, and then you overwork it, and you're like, oh, I liked it better before I added all this stuff. That's kind of how I'm feeling with these shoes. Like, I kind of wish I would have just done all white shoe with, like, the green leafy highlights, or just did, like, the flowery sides with the yellow squiggle. But I'm actually really stoked with how the embroidery is turning out. I feel like that's gonna like push it past being overworked, if that makes sense, and pull the whole shoe together. So it kind of works. Bad news, I'm not gonna finish it today because this video is already so long. So that means we're gonna do a two-parter. Which will be cool. So what we figured out, to get the hydro dip to stick on the rubber, what worked best was actually not having any primer or any paint but really making sure to like 
rub off the gooey film. And then can you hydrate up on fabric? Yes, but it like depends on the fabric. Cause on the test shoes when I did on this fabric without any primer or anything, it looked really good and you weren't getting like any cracks or anything. But then when I did it on the actual Converse, it reacted different to the fabric and we got kind of more of like a faded rustic look. And spoiler alert for Weston's video, it is 100% cotton because I, th I think the fake Converse's are made of something different or maybe they just have like a top coat of something that made the Hydra Dip like not fade. But I guess you go check out Weston's video besides just burning the fabric to see what it's made of. He also cut it in half. It's super satisfying to watch. Definitely worth it. Let's see what's inside. So I put the link in the description and I'll also probably put a little tag or whatever somewhere, so. Part two is coming, I'll embroider the shoes. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. All the things that the old YouTube algorithm asks so that this video does well. <laughs> And yeah, here's some bloopers. One. <laughs> Dude. Ah! No! Dad! <laughs> Come on, Smooth, you gotta pull me back, Smooth. I used to be a crack addict, but now I just love assholes. <laughs> Talk about crack. Dude. You got the locusts, you got the chicken pox, you got the bubonic plague. Now we got common colds. <laughs> <laughs> Doomsday prepping. You heard? I got my degree in physical therapy and medicine. And I know how to make a prescription. I'm also a pharmacist. <laughs> As a certified pre-owned vehicle driver and a certified doctor, I have three degrees. <laughs> I have five degrees. Law, physical therapy, pharmacy. <laughs> doctor <laughs> Horses. I repeated Stephen Henniger for eight years, and that's how I got my pud. I'm the real deal. I went to college. My mom paid for all of it. It's all in the name tag. <laughs> I don't know. You see that plaque back there? That's how I win. <laughs> in the mall, at a restaurant, out of a restaurant, inside, outside. We need to stop today. Beautiful. Yeah, that was good. That was. I like it.